I always say the same thing and that's that it might not feel like it right now but you will be happy again and although it feels like the weight of the world is on your shoulders just now and it feels like there's no way out and the future looks horrendous and all of those things you will be happy again and you will smile it just takes time and I wish I'd had somebody telling me that even though we knew Ethan was terminally ill I think people kind of think anticipatory grief that's what it's called I think people think that well they kind of knew it was it was going to happen but that doesn't make an iota like if I go back in time to myself, I would have said, forget about the terminal part. Don't be thinking about that while he was with me. Because there was no preparation that will ever, ever, ever get you ready to, to watch your child go down into the ground. Nothing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So I wish I didn't spend the time when Ethan was with me to think, oh my God, I'm, go- I'm going to have to bury. I wish that never entered my head. I wish I just went, okay, terminal, right, I'm going to scratch that word out. I'm going to forget about it. And I'm going to have Ethan here and now. And we're going to have some fun. And we're going to take the highs and the lows and what will be, will be. But if, if I could go back and, and just say something to me now, it would say that all the, there is going to be heartache, but there is heartache in any family relationship. Uh, having a disability doesn't make that heartache any worse or any less. You will meet the greatest people. You will have the greatest child. Things will be difficult, yes, but it will just bring out the best in you. It will focus your energy on trying to make a difference for other people you constantly have to be pushing the limits of what you're capable of because if you just sort of sat there and accepted that what you currently have is all you're ever going to have then there's no progression there's no moving forward and there's no change and you're you're missing out on so much more than than what you realized and I think you you have to keep pushing forward. You have to keep trying. And one of the, the big things for me is that I I refuse to accept that what I currently have is all I will ever get from this life. I, I refuse to accept that. And I'm determined to just keep going. Even even if I'm knocked back constantly, I just you just need to keep pushing through and keep trying. I have a lot, you know, I still have a huge amount of grief about Alfie. I still don't know what's going to happen to him tomorrow, let alone when he's an adult. You know, I I need to focus on something positive. And that's, you know, I also have an incredible amount of guilt about Alfie having hit a prescription because I worked really hard to get that. And it, we were just very very lucky in the right place right time worked with amazing people to help us you know our doctors um, and our pain all the people that came together but I still also you know having known I know now a lot of families who have very seriously ill children you know some of them a lot worse than Alfie and I feel I feel bad about that and that's why I you know I feel like it's I have to carry on for people like that yeah, and it's a it's a very unique situation people find themselves in. Whether you once again, whether you have a rare disease, whether you're just in the community, whether you're a carer, it it, it can be isolating because you think, well, if I talk to blah 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 about this, they won't understand or they won't be able to truly understand it, and not will truly be able to understand how you feel. But the the problem is they will be able to help. Yeah, that's the thing that you don't realize. You don't necessarily have to speak to someone that can emphasize on every single point. They can still help you. They can still do things for you to make your life better and richer. I think the more parents, especially men, hide and don't talk about this, people ain't going to get it. You know, they're not going to understand and. Yeah, there's nothing to be ashamed of. It's life. It is what it is. We all, you know, anxiety, again, in men, I think anxiety is seen as something to be hidden, like a weakness, whereas I see it as a strength almost. You know, it's it's normal. It's an emotion. And it's normal to talk about it. It's a strength to be able to talk about your mental health and their needs. And through that, you're only going to get better. 
I want to sit in 10 years time if I get sick and I want to be fit to say to people well dang it I done a good job at life I done everything I could and I hope people will look at me if I'm sick and they'll be like wow didn't Ashley do it all did, wasn't she a real like go-getter and a real life grabber and if I can dedicate my life to raising awareness and helping other people then I think that's a life well spent. I think that that's a pretty good job. I still have my HD free time and I still do things out of the HD community. But if I can help anybody coming behind me struggling, then I'm pretty happy with my life then. So I am. And I have amazing memories with my family and with my dad. Do I wish they were different memories? Well, yeah. But at least I'm getting the chance to make them, you know? Some people don't have that and that I'm grateful for that. So I am. I'm grateful for the time that I've had, even though it's slightly different than how I would have wanted it.